what the heck is platinum and how does it work? That's what we're talking about today. With the assistance of this beastly tome, which I highly recommend to anyone who's interested in actually learning the ins and outs of platinum palladium. We're going to simplify this conversation rather drastically. But if you want to go into the weeds, deep dive. This is the book for you. Platinum and Palladium Photographs, Technical History, Connoisseurship, and Preservation. It's written by this consortium of really smart people. I am not one of them. But I understand enough of it to have a conversation with you about it. So, why the vintage everything? Well, platinum is one of the oldest photographic print processes. They came to platinum when they were searching for something that was a little bit less mercury-based and uh, a little more accessible and far more stable than the early photographic processes of the early 1800s, early to mid-1800s. Platinum really came into its own around 1880, 1890, and was sort of like the duh, no duh print process before World War I. And by the time World War I came along, the chemistry that was involved in platinotypes or platinum palladium printing got so expensive that it sort of fell out of favor rather quickly and was replaced by silver gelatin. But in between 1880, 1890, and the start of World War I, there's this magical period where platinotypes were commercially produced. You could buy a packet of paper that was pre-coated and you could just take it home to your 8x10 negatives and print with it. Just take your negative, lay it on your sensitized paper, expose it to UV light, which, I mean, the sun was kind of the way to do that in 1900, and develop it and rock and roll. And the chemistry was a little heinous, but not really that bad. They were using hydrochloric acid often as a clearing bath, which we now no longer use because it. But it worked. So basically, platinum palladium printing, you're mixing a couple of different things that you're going to buy now pre-made from someone. You're going to buy it from Bostick and Sullivan or Photographer's Formula or whoever buys it, or you can just buy the metals and make it yourself. But it involves a serious working knowledge of chemistry. And if that's the direction you're headed towards, definitely get the book. I call this the print Bible because it is the guide to how to do all this. But basically you're gonna get some form of ferric oxalate and you're gonna get some also forms of platinum and palladium salts. They have complicated names, I'll put them up here for you. But basically you're gonna mix the ferric oxalate with the platinum and or palladium salts. And that mixture is now sensitive to UV light. Each thing on its own is not so sensitive to UV light, but you mix them and you have something that will, when exposed to light and then later developed, turn black to whatever varying extent that it was exposed to light. The cool thing, or one of the cool things about this process is one, you don't have to have a dark room. You just have to have a room that's free of extraneous UV light. So most rooms are fine for this. And then the other cool thing is, and one of the reasons that this is so permanent, is the chemistry, right? This mixture of salts that we're putting together absorbs into the top layers of the paper itself. And so in order for you to make this image go away, it's not a matter of a substrate separating from a gelatin layer like it is in silver gelatin, where the gelatin can flake off or get dried off or get rubbed off or whatever. In order for you to make the image from your print go away, you have to physically scrape off those first couple of layers of paper. It absorbs a number of microns deep into the paper, which is excellent because it means that if you scratch the paper, no big deal. You have to really scratch the paper for this print or this image to not be there anymore. And that's one of the reasons it's so permanent. The other is that we're working with platinum and palladium, which are noble metals and are not particularly reactive. They don't oxidize, they don't react with the world around them, which means that your image is less likely to fade or change over time. There is, usually, 
when you make a print, leftover iron left in the print. Because iron, ferric oxalate, is what we're using to help make this thing light sensitive. And obviously you don't want iron left in your paper because iron will rust. And then your print will turn yellow and get really gross. And then it will fade and die. So what we do is we use an acid as a clearing bath. And when I print, I use a couple of clearing baths and you can learn all about the clearing baths from the printing Bible. But basically you need to remove that excess iron that's not been used as part of this chemical reaction when it's exposed to light. And once you remove that, you can then remove the acid through washing. So the print process basically looks like mix up your chemistry so that it's light sensitive to UV light, cut your piece of paper, make your exposure, to UV light, and then put it through development. Once you have it developed, you can clear out the excess iron. And so typically, uh, right after you've developed your print, you'll get like a warmer than you kind of want platinum palladium print. It'll be a little more yellow than you expect, especially in the highlights. And in the process of clearing, all of that washes out and you're left with just the actual highlight tone that you were looking for to begin with. And then in order to make sure that it's actually archival, once you've removed the iron, you have to remove the acid. Otherwise, it will just keep doing what acid does and over the course of time, remove your image by removing the fact that the paper exists at all. So coat, develop, or coat, expose, develop, clear, wash. And by the time you've done all that correctly, you'll have a piece of paper that will withstand the test of time for a very long time, for longer than any of us will be around by a huge margin. We're talking thousands of years, assuming that you've done all of those things correctly. If you screw up any one of them, you'll notice it as the print starts to rust or the paper starts to disintegrate because it's got too much acid left in it, etc. But you'll have a very very stable print, assuming you do everything correctly. Now, why did it sort of fall out of vogue? Well, it turns out platinum, which is one of the metals we're using, can be used as a catalyst in explosives. And it turns out the military really liked that idea when they were building bombs for World War I. So platinum got hideously expensive right around that time. And it became cost prohibitive to make platinum palladium prints as the price of the metals skyrocketed. And so we turn to silver, which has been far cheaper then and continues to be far cheaper than platinum and palladium. It works and it still looks incredible, but it's not quite the same and certainly nowhere near as permanent. <sighs> I'm sure I left a lot out, but that's like a real quick primer of what goes into this and where it comes from and how it works. Uh, the things that I got wrong, feel free to put in the comments down below. And uh, we'll also put a link to this beautiful book in the comments down below, or description, I guess, or maybe both, if you need to uh, brush up on your very technical thousand pages of platinum, palladium, history, connoisseurship, and preservation. Let's see. Oh, it's only 500 pages. Piece of cake. Anyway, thanks for joining us.